Hi, in this video, I'm going to solve a problem related to electrical circuits. I'm going to solve it very fast initially, then in the rest of the video, I will explain how I solved it very fast. The nearest value of the power dissipated and the 3 ohm resistance in the circuit is. So we are given an electrical circuit with a couple of resistors, then there is a voltage source and then there is a current source. We want the power dissipated in the 3 ohm resistance. We have redrawn the same circuit over here and essentially what we want here is the current in this 3 ohm resistance using which we can find the power. So I am going to make a series of modifications. The first modification is of course replace these two resistance with the 4 ohm resistance. So this is 4. Second thing is because we want current, I am going to replace this chunk with its Norton sequence. So I am going to re remove this voltage source and add a current source. Okay, and the current is given by 2 by 4, which is 0.5. Then we have a 4 and a 4 over here. So I'm going to replace this resistance and modify this to 2. Now we have a total current of 2 and 5 flowing to this. So 2.5 is the total current that times the equivalent resistance of 2 and 3, which is 6 by 5 times inverse of the resistance of the 3 ohm which is 1 by 3 and this value turns out to be 1. So the current flowing in the 3 ohm resistance is 1 so the power dissipated as I square R which is 3 watt. That was a real fast way of solving this particular gate problem but when, when a student faces such a problem in the examination the real challenge is there are too many ways in which you could solve this particular problem and some of them are very time consuming and the student has to make a choice as to which one he should pick. Here are some of the ways in which one could solve this problem. The first thing is of course we can use the superposition principle, find the current through the circuit, current through the 3 ohm resistance and then find the power in the resistance. But at this point I would rule out superposition at least for two reasons. One is it's not a good idea to use that when we are looking at the power dissipated. Okay? Second, superposition is very very useful when we are looking at AC circuits. That is when the impedances are functions of frequencies, right? 1 by j omega c or j omega l. Whenever there is an omega factor, superposition principle is very useful. But for DC circuits, superposition is not all that useful. Kirchhoff's first and second law, voltage and current law, right? This is the go-to option if you do not know how to apply the Norton's or the Thevenin's equivalent. But if you know how to apply this and if you have enough practice, these are some of the fastest means to solve the problem but if you still have time at the end of the gate exam this is something that I would certainly go for okay but first I would try the Thevenin's or the Norton's equivalent which is what I am going to do here. So I have redrawn the circuit here the first thing is to replace 2 and 2 with its equivalent resistance which is 2 plus 2 4. We want the currents in the circuit right so we have a 2 ampere current over here and then we want the current in this resistance I and if we could somehow replace this into currents finding I would be simple which is what I am going to do now. In order to do that notice these two a resistance and the voltage source is connected between say points A and B. The idea is let us replace this with its Norton's equivalent which is a current source and the resistance. Okay? So what is the Norton's equivalent? What I have drawn here is, so between any two terminals like this uh, A and B, any two nodes, we have a voltage source V Thevenin and resistance R Thevenin. Its equivalent between the same two nodes A and B is given by a current source which is I Norton and a resistance R Norton. Okay? To make things very easy, R Norton is nothing but R Thevenin. And 
I northern is just current in this circuit which is given by V Thevenin by R Thevenin. So you can replace any voltage and resistance with its equivalent current and its resistance in parallel. This is what I am going to do here between A and B. Notice this all these points are A because they are all equipotential. All these points are all B because again they are equipotential. So I am going to replace this with a circuit like this. So first thing is the resistance value equivalent Norton resistance remains the same. So it's 4. Then parallel to it we have a current source whose current is given by 2 by 4 which is 0.5. So now I have replaced it by its Norton's equivalent. And at this stage we notice 4 and 4 are in parallel. So we can further simplify this. So let's remove this 4 and the resistance over here is given by 4 times 4 by 4 plus 4 which is 16 by 8 which is 2. Now what is the total, total current that enters node A from, from the outside? Notice this is node A, this is also node A because they are all equipotential. So what is the total inflow of current into node A? That is sum of this current plus this current which is 2.5. When such a current enters a parallel circuit, parallel resistors, how does the current get split? More current flows through the least resistance path. Okay. So based on that and what is the exact value, let's take the equivalent resistance which is 2 into 3 by 2 plus 3. So 6 by 5. Okay. And this multiplied by inverse of the resistance which is 1 by 3 times the total current flowing through the node A is 2.5. So that gives us essentially 1 ampere. So the current flowing through this is 1 ampere and current is 1 ampere. What is the power dissipated in this? It's I square R. So it's 1 square into 3 which is 3 watts. Fine. And at this stage we had a choice between Thevenin and Norton. Why did it he, choose to convert the Thevenin into a not an equivalent and not this into a Thevenin equivalent because of course this is the 3 ohm resistance that we are interested in. If we have to replace this into an equivalent circuit, we lose this 3 ohm resistance. Right? 3 ohm remains a 3 ohm but it is some other circuit and at the end of the day we want the currents in it. And finally, just to compare the methods, if we, we were not sure of how to apply the Norton or Thevenin equivalent, how long would it take to solve by using the Kirchhoff's law. I am going to fill it up with the rest of this video. Okay, so now we are going to solve the problem using the Kirchhoff's method, the voltage and the current law. So let us rub all this. So using the Kirchhoff's voltage and uh, current laws. So let's start naming some variables. So the first thing is of course even using Kirchhoff's laws I am going to simplify the circuit as much as possible. I am going to replace this with a 4 ohm resistance. With this I notice all the potentials at the top are the same. So I am going to call them by one potential which is x. Okay. And let's say I am going to ground what is at the bottom. I am going to call it 0. Let us say uh, the current we want is I1, let us call this current as I2 and let us call this current as I3. Essentially current flows through from negative to positive in this mean and then it reverses in these two branches. Okay, So based on this can we say what is the current that is going on over here and here? Yes, 2 goes here, so this is I1 minus 2. Similarly, 2, so this should be I1 minus 2. Because 2 comes from this side, what goes here is I1. And with that, let's write for the thing, where should we pick? Let's pick this particular node because we have all the unknowns entering this node. We know I2 is I3 
plus i1 minus 2. Then we want to solve for x, right? So let's replace this with, with the potentials. So i2 is, i3 notice it's x minus 0 by 4, x by 4 plus i1 is x minus 0 by 3, so x by 3 minus 2. So this becomes uh, 7x by 12, okay, so 7x by 12, okay, here is the first relation. So at the stage, we have a relationship between i2 and x. If we have one more relationship between i2 and x, we can solve for x as well as i2. And in terms, let's say, if we solve for x, we know i1. We need one more relationship. And with i2 and x, so I'm going to write zero, the voltage 0 becomes x here. So 0, so the total x is 0 plus there is a 2 volt increase. So that is plus 2 and uh, then there is a drop of I2 times 4 minus I2 times 4. So we start with the 0 voltage plus 2 minus I2 times 4 is X. Okay. So now we have one more relationship between I2 and X. So let's solve for this. And what is I2 over here? I2 is... Uh, so this is 4 times i2 which is 7x by 12 minus 2. So this is 3 times minus 8. And if you solve for it, this is 2 minus 7x by 3 plus 8. So this becomes 10 and then this becomes x plus 7 by 3 which is 7x by 3 plus x which is 10x by 3. So this implies x is 3 volts. If x is 3 volts, I1 is, I1 is x by its resistance which is 3 by 3 which is 1 amps and because I1 is 1 amps, the power dissipated in that is 1 square times the resistance in it which is 3 which is 3 watts again <laughs> the trick with electrical circuit problems is that we have lots of options superposition dependent norton or kirchhoff's voltage and current law although kirchhoff's voltage and current law will give you the answer but it will take a lot of time usually thevenin and norton is is the best method to get the fastest answer so practice for that and superposition is used usually useful when we have uh, AC power sources. So when the voltage is, instead of this, if we had, let's say, an AC source, then that is a case where superposition is most useful because then all this, we also don't have capacitors here, but given capacitors and an AC circuit, we have the impedances in terms of J omega L and one by J omega C, right? Now, if, if the two sources has different omegas, different frequencies, then we need to use superposition because, I mean, the impedance is a function of frequency and there are two sources with two different frequencies. There is no way to solve it without considering superposition. That, I'll see you with another video. Good luck.